guys, Tava here, and a few weeks ago I got an email from a company called Motion VFX which sells plugins and templates for Final Cut Pro and other software, and I got an email about a free software that they had called M-Light Diffuse, and I've used some of their products before in the past and I've been pretty impressed by them, so I thought, why not, I might as well try this, I can buy it now for zero dollars. So it looked pretty cool and I installed it into Final Cut Pro super easily, so now I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on this plugin and how it works and how easy it is to use and also the kind of quirks in it, so take a look at this. So of course the promo video made this product look really really cool and of course that's the point of promo videos to promote a product but when you bring it into Final Cut Pro it's a bit more complicated and I don't exactly love everything about this plugin or the look that it gives but let me show you how it works okay so jumping into Final Cut Pro I have the shot here with some light passing across the camera because this is how the shot works with controlling light so if we go into our effects panel over here and you come down into your video effects you will find M light diffuse and you can see that there are six diffuse effects so if we just scroll through these six diffuse effects real quick you can see the first one has this blue light that comes through the second one really just softens all the light the third one adds a lot of grain as well as softening the light the fourth one adds these yellow little streaks across the screen the fifth one has this red color that's a bit smaller and the sixth one is your traditional kind of anamorphic look with just this blue flare so depending on the circumstance you're going for you can use all of these differently and of course they're all customizable inside of the settings but from the start none of them really look that great so for instance with the shot let's just try M light diffuse number six just to throw it on and show you what kind of settings you can change with this so once you have it in here over in your settings you can find that there are a lot of different controls you have to make this look as good as you want so the first thing I notice when I put these effects on is that it seems like there's way too much flare for the shot and light that you have and really what this effect does is it doesn't know where the light source is necessarily it just takes the bright parts of the scene and creates a streak across that area so this creates a lot of streaks in areas like you can see here that don't exactly have a light source like the sun has here so what I like to do first is in the diffuse threshold and the settings increase that amount really high up so that the areas that don't have really bright light sources don't have the flare in them but I like to keep the amount and brightness pretty low because I think this effect looks much better subtle you can change the smoothness spread Red, diffuse blur, horizontal blur, vertical blur, all those sorts of things. And of course you can also change the diffuse color and this applies to all the different looks. So for instance this effect right here that has this red look, if you don't like it being that red color you can change it to any other color that you want. So again for diffuse number 6 if I don't like this dark blue color I could change it to red for instance but I think the blue fits pretty well in this instance. And it gives that anamorphic look that people are probably trying to go for. So if I play the shot back really quickly you can see that there is a bit of flare but it's not that dramatic. It's just a few little streaks in the screen in certain places that add a hint of color and excitement to the shot which gives it that cinematic anamorphic look that everyone's going for but it doesn't overdo it which I like a lot and you can tone it down which makes the best shots okay so let's look at another shot here we have a shot passing by some lights that should put off some pretty good flares coming across from them because they are a bright light source so we can just go through these different looks again and see what one we like so I think I'm just gonna try M light diffuse 4 on this one so I'm just gonna drag and drop it you can see immediately the flares pop up in this shot but they are a bit too harsh and I want them more faded in this shot because I think it's just overdoing it right now. And also I don't think the color is great. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into diffuse color and adjust it to a bit more muted tone. So once the colors are how I like them, I'm going to go to diffuse threshold and bring that up again. So it only shows the flares on the really bright portions of the shot. And you can really see in this example, if I change the width over here, you can see how much it changes where the flares occur and they kind of go off to the right. So I'm just going to keep them centered for this example. And then there's actually even more settings. You can have noise on or off. I don't really like that, but you do have the option. And you also have the setting for reflection, which kind of adds flares in the darker areas of the shot. I'm not a big fan of this and I think it doesn't look great, but you do have the option if it looks good in your shots. So if you just toggle this effect on and off, you can just see it creates these little yellow flares over where the light sources are, and it looks pretty simple and cinematic. So anyway, that's just a quick look at this M Light Diffuse plugin. It's not great, and I don't think it works for every circumstance, but every now and then you might find a situation where it does look good in your shots, and it's just nice to have because, of course, it is free, so there's really no harm in downloading it. Anyway, that's it for today. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.